Welcome to Chris Sweeney Talks 2, a new series, and we've got a brand new guest uh, to start us off. He is very well known. Um, he was involved in a very, very famous incident. He's been compared to a real life James Bond. His name is Herb Joubert. How are you, my friend? Hello, Chris. Nice, nice to see you today. Nice to see you too. Um, we can't talk about where you are. Um, that will become clear. Um, you are safe and well, but uh, we can't talk about where you are. You've been compared to James Bond. You were a French Navy officer and you're also part of the French Secret Service. Um, but you came to prominence uh, by escaping from Dubai yourself. And then you were involved, obviously, in the Prince Latifah escape that was, uh, you know, made global headlines in 2018. So I have... Uh... Uh, different uh, life experience and, and, and skills. And, uh, one of them is to be a naval officer, captain, and a former secret operative for the French Secret Service. So after I escaped from Dubai, I published a book like 10 years ago or something. And uh, I described what happened to me, uh, the, 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 the experience I went through. And Latifa found my book. Uh, it was banned in Dubai, it still, still is banned. But she managed to find a book. And uh, when she saw that, number one, I did escape. And number two, I was a former secret operative. So she believed I could help her. I could, I could help her to, to get out of there. Yeah, um, I mean, Ferdinand was uh, not aware. I, I should mention we were, when you escaped from Dubai, it was you weren't part of the French Secret Service. You 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 had a business uh, in Dubai, didn't you? And and things went badly, and they they, they were they were holding you there, and that's why you escaped. You weren't escaping as a as a French Secret Service agent, but obviously you used your skills uh, to escape. Yeah, I was just a, a private uh, individual, a businessman. I, I had no I had no contact whatsoever with my uh, with the service from before, so uh, I was just a former operative, but... But obviously you had the skills, uh, you had the skills to escape. And then for anyone, it's maybe, I'm sure everyone knows the Prince Latifa thing, it's, it's so well known, but she's obviously the daughter of the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed, um, and you helped her escape from Dubai. So maybe you could bring us up to speed on it. I mean, obviously we know the escape was successful. You got out into the Indian Ocean, um, and then commandos swooped on your boat, brought you back to Dubai, took your boat, um, and L Latifah's never sort of, well, she's been seen since, but um, I think we'll get into that, that maybe uh, she doesn't have her freedom. Um, I, I was going to ask you, are you surprised that they let you go, that you're not still imprisoned in Dubai the second time well, after I, Latifah? It, 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 it's something that I explain in my book, uh, that has never been told in the media yet. Uh, first of all, when I was attacked, I saw on my radar those ships that were following me. So I, I knew there was something uh, was going on. And at the time, with my uh, Navy experience and captain experience in general, so I know, I know the maritime laws. And uh, when they attacked the boat, my first feeling was, a complete disbelief because this does not happen. You, you know, uh, 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 you, ca you cannot board a ship like that in, in international water. Uh, you need reasons, you need permissions, you need authorizations. And because I was on a US yacht, uh, it meant that I was under US jurisdiction. So even when the boarding is justified, the, the, the boarding party, the police, military, or whatever, they still need a permission from the U.S. And, uh, of course, it did not happen. I never saw no, any authorization. They did not tell me who they were or if they had a warrant or if they had any reasons. Uh, but I was still in disbelief. So somehow I thought that the, the thing would resolve by itself because no matter how they put it, they had uh, kidnapped an American citizen in international waters on a US boat. So they were not allowed to do that, no matter what. There was absolutely no reason, no jurisdiction to, to do that. So when uh, they released me from prison, uh, I think two or three times they told me they had to let me go. 
This is in Dubai. This is after the capture. You're back in Dubai. So you were you were kept in prison, but then they they, they let you out. So you were kind of uh, on bail, I guess. Is the is the sort of I guess uh, what people would understand it. You you couldn't leave so, the country, uh, so, but you had your freedom w- within the country. Is that right? So so I was in a solitary confinement. Uh, okay. In a secret prison. I don't even know where. And uh, after a few days, they told me they had to let me go. So it was not that of compassion or something, because somebody told them, you must let him go now. And they released me without charge. Uh, I was free to go, no no criminal charge, no nothing. They put me on, on back on the boat that was severely damaged. And, and then I, I sailed to Sri Lanka. And that was a difficult uh, journey because honestly, I thought, they were going to bomb me on the way to eliminate witnesses and uh, and evidence. So we and my crew were really scared on the boat that we would not make it. And then we made it to Sri Lanka. So that, that, that's what I had an elephant out of my shoulder. Uh, I was fin- finally released. Uh, I saw my wife and, and uh, I went to London to start... Uh, uh, giving uh, interviews and uh, explaining what happened. Yeah, I mean, that became the sort of Free Latifa, uh, obviously, campaign. And, you know, it grew a lot of momentum. It was in the media. Um, can I just maybe go back to the... I, I should also mention that you have a book, uh, A Private Family Matter. So um, I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning. But Private Family Matter, you've got your new book, which is essentially telling the story of all of all this happening, what's happened since... And you, you say it's in 20 years in parallel between your life and Latifa's life almost. Yes, I, because what happened to Latifa actually happened before. Uh, we are talking about a, a more than 20 years uh, span of kidnapping, disappearances of, of princesses and uh, women who disappeared on the order of Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, so it's not just Latifa. Latifa is... One of them, it's one of the most dramatic one because it, it, it went, it broke the news uh, worldwide. So I explained uh, the my story and at the same time, Latifa's story when she was a teenager. And of course we did not know each other, but we had a life in parallel and I put that in the book and eventually how we met and how she contacted me and how she, explain to me the, the, the horrors that uh, she went through. And uh, then we set up uh, a plan for her to escape. Sure. Uh, you know, one thing I'd love to ask you, which, I've, which, I, which I think you're probably the only person that could answer was, what was the end of the plan? Because obviously, you know, as you say, you got boarded in Indian water, uh, international waters, um, you know, close to India. So where were you going and what was your... What was the end of that plan? Because uh, I guess you can tell us now because, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think you'll be doing it again. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's all in detail in the book, but basically the plan was to reach India and then from India to fly to the US. Now, for Latifa, it was 100% safe and sure because she had a... a, a European passport with her, with, in a, with a different identity. Oh, really? So, and how did she get? Yeah. And did you help? Uh, did you help secure that? Was that something you were able to help with? No, and, uh, it's something that I th- thank you for. Uh, let me uh, bring that up because uh, it's it's a chapter that I did in the book like last week, two weeks ago, because there was a, a newspaper to broke the news and who published an article where, she, where they said that Latifa had bought an Irish passport. But because they got partial information and, uh, and not accurate, they really did not know what they're talking about. Uh, and I know about passport because when I was in the Secret Service, I had five different identities. Yeah. So I know how passports are made in a secret manner. So Latifa had an Irish passport, a real passport. It was not a fake passport. It was a real passport. She had a, 
uh, a, a completely different identity, not linked to, to the Maktoum. So she could have reached India, go to the airport. She had a visa. I arranged for her uh, an electronic visa to go to the U.S. So she would reach the U.S. And then when she arrives on U.S. soil, the passport does not matter anymore. You, you can tell the immigration that, uh, no, that's not my passport. It, it, it's way to, it's one way for me to get here because I'm a human rights victim. Yeah, you're claiming asylum. Yeah. 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 And then you claim asylum. So it doesn't matter how you got there. As soon as you got there, they, they have to consider your political asylum bid. And then they, they follow the, the, the process. So she would have been able to stay in the U.S., leave a free woman in the U.S. And uh, unfortunately, it did not happen uh, because we were betrayed in, uh, in between. Uh, you know, the, I am very experienced in the technical aspect of those escapes. And when I saw those ships following us, after 48 hours that uh, they discovered that Latifa had uh, escaped, I could not understand how they found my boat so quickly because we're not talking about being in London here, you know, with cell towers and mobile phones. And we are in the middle of the ocean, literally in the middle of the ocean. And then I have three boats following me with a military signature, so I knew, I knew they were military boats, and I could not understand how they could have found us so quickly, because there is nothing in the middle of the ocean to triangulate or find a radio source or anything like that. So I concluded that they did not find us. They were told where we were. So I had my suspicions already, and then they attacked us and they sent us to prison. But then when I was released, I started to ask questions to who I suspected for giving away our location and be responsible for, for this crime. And I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up at, at the beginning of this interview. You said her escape was a success. And you are absolutely right. Uh, her escape was successful because too many times, like nine times out of 10, what I read in the media is a failed escape. No, I mean, you were in international waters. You were, you, you, you were away. I mean, you had, you had succeeded. Of course, it's a success. Yeah, yeah but, but as, as, uh, ma many uh, me media uh, uh, organisms said it was a failed escape. You know, like, you know, failed escape would be like, if you was caught on the other side of the fence or at the beach, you know, or mm. something like that, but not not 15 miles and right away, uh, or, or and on US jurisdiction on top of that. Uh, so yeah, our, our escape was successful and we are on our way to make it to the US. And uh, unfortunately we were uh, interrupted and assaulted at sea by uh, India and UAE forces i now, mean I, I was going to say I that maybe, maybe if i could just put something to you because i think i have wrote i think i uh, i've done some interviews and done some pieces and I, I think what i was told um was that um your the cia or the u.s government had hacked your um your radar system and that was how they were able to pinpoint you is that is that correct or is that is that false information as well uh, yeah, it's partially true. So uh, the, 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 this is how they found us. Uh, Latifa's friend, Tina, brought on the boat her cell phone. And I, I asked her before to leave it behind because I, I know how those things work. And Latifa had left her phone behind. But Tina brought with her a phone that was bugged by Pegasus. So her phone was infected with the spyware Pegasus. So with the spyware, Dubai was able to find out who was my satellite provider, you know, for the satellite connection. It did not tell them where we were. 
there was no geolocation with, with, with that phone. But they knew who was the satellite provider. So they contacted the, the FBI, not the CIA. They contacted the FBI in Dubai for help. And they asked them, can you find, can you find him, me? Uh, can you find me or Latifa or the boat? So they, they told her who was the satellite provider. It's a, it's a company called KVH in Rhode Island. And the FBI went to KVH and they asked them to provide, to disclose my satellite, my geolocation, because my satellite provider was the only one to know live where the boat was because uh, I, I am in satellite connection. So they know, they, they have my GPS, my uh, basically, mm -hmm. but they are not allowed to disclose it. And uh, the, the FBI was able to get it without a warrant, without a court order, which, which is illegal. And then when they got the, my geolocation, they gave it to Dubai. And then Dubai dispatched Indian warships uh, we were too far already from the UAE, so they, they could not send their own ship. So they, they called the Prime Minister Modi of India and they asked him to help uh, get uh, his runaway daughter back. An adult woman, you know, we're not talking about a minor here. And uh, so that's how they found us. Me, I am profoundly shocked that as a US citizen, my own country would sell me out because that's what it is. They sold me out. There was no legal justification. They knew she was not kidnapped because they knew she was a runaway and uh, there was no justification whatsoever to, to make an arrest in uh, international waters. So they were not misled. I know they said they've been misled, but I don't believe it. I, uh, they knew that Latifa was not kidnapped. They knew she was a runaway. If they were misled by anything, it's to the extent that Sheikh Mohammed went, you know, attacked the boat with uh, warships, helicopters, and commandos, uh, you name it, and, and uh, kidnapping and the torture on board. And uh, they, I believe they told him, okay, that, 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 that's enough. You, you need to stop that, okay? And uh, you have to let him go. So, but initially they sold me out. They, they, yeah. I mean, they it, it may be a silly question. Um, and again, excuse my ignorance. Could you have turned the satellite off? Um, or did you need that to to navigate? What was there a more easier way, or was it was it impossible to be on a boat with the, with the navigation off, just in the satellite off? Sorry, just in case this had happened. Well, actually, my satellite connection uh, saved our lives because uh, uh, without it, uh, we would not have been able to send distress calls. Because when I saw those ships following us, I reported it right away. Uh, I had uh, I had a team in the background following us uh, on satellite and uh, on communication. So when I saw that and when I identified the Indian Coast Guard, I reported it, and the people that reported it filed a claim to the U.S. State Department and to the Coast Guard. So people were aware of what was going on, and that's one of the reasons why the the UAE changed their plans because, and I have evidence to say what I'm going to say. The, the, the initial, the, the intentions in the attack is to bring Latifa back, number one. Number two, kill, kill us all on the boat and sink the boat. That was where, that was what the orders were, to kill us all, Sing the boat, bring Latifa back. Uh, on the boat, and it's the first time that I ever said that, so it's news, but on the attack, so there, there were commandos all in black with masks and 
But there were five American contractors with them. American, with the attacker. So they were, la- they were there to, not to attack themselves, but like as a support team. And although they were part of the attackers, they are probably the one who saved our lives because when they attacked the boat, they saw that we were not mercenaries, uh, we were not shooting at the Coast Guard, and number and number one, uh, the most important thing is that they saw that Latifa was not kidnapped. She, she was the one away. So they reported, and also another important thing is that they, they, they took my, uh, under torture, they asked me for my password and my emails and access to my tablets and things, things like that. So under torture, I was forced to give away my password. And then they accessed the messages. And when they accessed my uh, mobiles, my, my devices, they saw that I already reported the attack. So they knew they could not cover it up anymore. And that's why they changed their plan. And here also, I have evidence of the change of plan because things happened after the attack that can only be be explained by change of plan. You know, they sent other boats to our location and that was not planned before. So why did they why did they send other boats, other cargo ships, and uh, you know because it was done already? They captured us. We were uh, uh, detained, you know, in restraints. So they had nothing to fear. So they changed their plan, and they, the reason why they changed their plan is when they saw that they could not cover it up anymore. I mean, obviously, as you said, you know, you're a you're, you're a former Secret Service agent, so you've been through stressful scary situations, I'm sure, many times. Um, but in this example, are you scared? Are you frightened? Or is your professional training kick in and you're more alert? I can only imagine it's a terrifying situation, commandos jumping on a boat with masks on and detaining you. Um, it, it, I, I would be scared. I, 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 I'm pretty honest about that. But for yourself, what was it like? Okay, so like you said, uh, my reflex kicked in. Uh, the number one reflex was to do nothing because I, I had moved a finger, they would have shot me on the spot because they were looking for a reason. So number one is that calm down. I mean, don't do anything. Do not resist. So I did not resist. I was armed on the boat, but I did not resist because I knew that if I had moved the finger, they would have, they would have killed me. I would... I was in a fear of getting, uh, of dying under torture. I was not scared like uh, calling my mother or, you know, something like that. I, I, I was uh, up to my mind, but, so not scared, but I was in fear to die in pain because I thought they were going to torture me. They knew, they knew who I was, they knew I escaped before. They knew I ridiculed Sheikh Mohammed before with my escape, so they, I knew they would not be very sympathetic to, to me. And and when I was brought to the prison, uh, they kept threatening me and they, they, I would be executed because of what I did. And uh, I told the guy in front of me, I said, oh, okay, well, just, why don't you make it short? You know, you know, just kill me now, you know. So we don't have to to waste your time and uh, just kill me. You're going to do it anyway. So, so in my mind, I it's not that I thought I was going to be killed. It's I knew I was going to be killed. And when I told them, just make it quick and, and uh, uh, shoot a bullet in my head, and the guy said, no, 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 not for you. That's too quick. And he, he explained to me in graphic details how they would pull my skin bit by bit to make it last like a week uh, of uh, excruciating pain and, and screwdriver and blowtorch and you name it. Uh, that's horrendous. Just, that's, that's awful. That's yeah, awful. That's awful. So that, that, that was my fear, that to be to die in pain. And then I was thinking of my family 
because in a situation like that, you know, they just make you disappear. There's nobody, there's no funeral, there's no, so nobody knows what happened. So that, that, that's what I, I was not afraid, but I was uh, sad because I was thinking of my family that they would never know. But at the same time, I had like that kind of confidence that something would happen because I had reported the attack. I, I, I sent distress messages already. So I was expecting that something would, would happen toward our release. Well, I mean, I think what also maybe what's uh, important to explain to you know to people watching and listening. I mean, I I lived in the UAE for you know for a period of time. I've, I've spoken about that before, um, and obviously you you know you've got you know extensive experience as well. But rules and laws um, are not fixed, and I I, <laughs> I underline the word are not. Um, and you know, people disappearing can happen they have ultimate power and yeah. you know yeah. it's it, it's it, it, you know so you're not just saying that and i think also it maybe underlines that you put all those things in place that saved you but lots of people would not have known how to you know put distress things out or, or do certain things and it maybe just shows you a number of people and they maybe have disappeared in, in other circumstances thankfully your your planning saved you from going down that route but it's not an exaggeration to say that they could have disappeared you because um, you know, the law there is is very, very flexible in terms of when the authorities want to apply and not apply and do certain things. It's it's a it's an open yeah. secret. Yeah. Now they could have they could have killed us and disappeared us. Uh, yeah. So th that's why I had those mixed feelings when I was there, and uh, I was uh, like, there's nothing I can do anyway. So it, it's not like I, I was scared. I knew I was going to die. I was expecting, I was hopeful of, so, you know, of something else. But in the end, like, like you said, in, in those places, they can make you disappear in, in the blink of an eye. And, 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 and then uh, the, the politics and the countries who are behind, they don't want to get embarrassed. Or they, 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 ignore the, they ignore the subject. You know, when, after I was released, because for any crimes, at sea against Americans or against the US yacht, it's the FBI who has jurisdiction. So after I was released, I filed a complaint with the FBI and they buried it. They did not do anything. Now I know why. At the time when I filed my complaint, I did not know there was a collusion between the UAE and the FBI, but I filed my complaints two times actually. And uh, they, they buried it. They, they told me uh, they, it's filed. There's nothing I can do. Uh, and they buried it. What about so, the French uh, authorities and government? Because obviously you're, you're a formal naval officer and also a Secret Service agent. Now, I, I don't know how much knowledge you have of, well, I'm sure you have lots of knowledge of the way the French Secret Service works, which maybe they, they would not want other people to know about and, and things like that. But also you're... You're, you know, you're obviously a French, you were a French citizen. I don't know if you still are, but you were. Um, you know, why did they not get involved? Um, you know, sh surely they might have wanted to protect you as well. Yeah, but it's another, it's another thing that I explain uh, in, in my book. Okay, number one, at the time I was a US citizen on an American boat. So the, the logical thing was the, the United States. France, I, I'm, I'm still a French citizen, and a former military. But I know by experience, and it's not, it's not just me, anybody, if you are in trouble in the UAE, whether you are American, French, uh, Yugoslavian, or your uh, country will not help you, will not. If you go to prison, they will bring you maybe some cookies, you know, but th that's all they can do. Because the, the the alliance, the corruption between the, the countries and, and the UAE is so deep that uh, whatever happened to their citizens, they would never want to make their friends, their hosts, mad. So they, they, they will never help you. And uh, when I first escaped from Dubai, because that's a, that's a typical example. Uh, so I was in Dubai uh, like in 2005, six, 
And at the time, I was, as a foreigner, I was not registered in the French consulate in Dubai. I was registered in the Miami French consulate. Why? Because I did not trust the French consulate. Like I would not trust the US consulate either. One thing you should, anybody should remind, uh, keep in mind is that when you are in, a, in the UAE, your consulate does not represent you to the UAE. The consulate represents the UAE to you. It's the other way around. Yeah. So when you are in trouble, if you need a birth certificate or a driver's license or something, yeah, they're going to help you. But if you are in trouble where the, the country is involved against you, they're not going to help you. So I knew that already when I went to Dubai the first time. And when I escaped, I escaped on a dinghy and I crossed the Indian Ocean and uh, I had my shirt and nothing else. I had no passport, nothing. So I got in India with a story to explain how I got there with, without documents. And when I went to the French embassy in Mumbai, in, in India, because I was registered in Miami, they contacted the French embassy in Miami to vouch for me, you know, to for background check and authenticate my, uh, my identity. If I had been registered in Dubai, they would not have done it. I would not have a passport. They would have sent me back or something. But they would not have helped me because they would never go against their host country. Yeah. Well, I mean, I should say that the obviously your first escape from Dubai is a very successful and interesting book. People can people can get that online as well. But you've got the new book, um, a private family affair. Um, I wanted to ask you all this stress and you know death threats and issues. Why write this book? Um, it seems like maybe you just want to enjoy your life and, and and get away from all these problems. But I guess you writing this book, putting it out there, is only going to make the UE want to target you more and maybe give you more worries about safety and your, and your life? Because I think you mentioned you've had death threats since people knew you were going to write this book and release it. Uh, uh, yes, no, so I, I'm glad uh, you, you bring that up. Uh, I, I was threatened to death several times by those people in the prison. Uh, and again, with details, uh, you know, they, that they could pay somebody $300 to kill me or they would kidnap me again, bring me back in Dubai to kill me there. So they gave me a number of, of graphic details on how they could do it. And, but the reason I, uh, it's not the reason I, I'm writing the book now, because I was not scared by those death threats. Uh, they, 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 they gave me death threats, yes, but that, that did not scare me. The, the reason why I decided to break my silence and to publish a book now is because uh, too many too many times I see the media, they got it wrong with the story. Uh, they, they, maybe, probably they don't do it on purpose, but there they are uh, mis, uh, inaccuracies or just plain wrong things about that story that I need to address to make it correct. And I was there, I was the captain, I orchestrated Latifa's extent, and I have to say things right the way they were and not sometimes the way I see it in, 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 in the media. And uh, one example is the Irish passport of Latifa. Who, who on earth would want to publish something like that? Because it, it can only hurt Latifa. Why would any say, why anybody would say, oh, she had a fake passport from, from Ireland? Why would anybody say that? You know, it, it doesn't help her. Uh, I mean, how many people knew about that? It, I mean, it, it couldn't have been too many people who knew about this passport because I, I guess, like you say, that was a key part of the plan. If people knew about the passport, then it would have made things difficult when you got to India. So, I mean, not many people must have known about that. Am, am I correct in assuming that it must be a, a short number, a small number of people? Uh, nobody knew about uh, about those details. Even even Latifa did not have all the details because I'm the one who processed it. I did not buy it, but I processed the background check and the verification uh, because w when she gave me the passport, so when she contacted me, contacted me, she already had the passport. 
And uh, have you seen the passport? I mean, did it look? I mean, like you said, you know what a you oh, know what a I, fake I passport is. Hand. Also, it it even, would have it would have it would have passed international standards. It would have been okay at the airport and stuff like that. You don't think there would be an issue? It it was um, legitimate no, enough no, no, to no. yeah. When she told me she had a passport, uh, I said, okay, first of all, I'm going to collect it because you cannot keep that document with you in Dubai. If somebody finds you, you're they're going to put you in jail. So I'm going to collect it. I'm going to collect it. I'm going to verify it, to double check it. And uh, you will use it after the escape because you, you could not use it from Dubai anyway. Uh, so I got, I, I sent my colleagues there you know, with, with what we call live drops. You know, what is a live drop? Um, I think so, but please tell me. I, I maybe watch too many uh, movies and think I know about this stuff. <laughs> A live drop is when you meet, uh, when agents meet together to exchange document or a small package or anything uh, without saying anything. So uh, a live drop is you drop something and some, and the agent pick it up. Is this maybe you go to a you go to a rubbish bin, you put a box in, and then someone comes and takes the box out and leaves that type of that type of thing, something along this nature, or you leave something on a bench and someone comes and sits on the bench and takes it. No, no, that, that's called the dead drop. Oh, when I see, sorry. No, when there's no contact. When there is a contact, it's called the live drop. Oh, I see. So maybe you're walking past someone and they, they pass it to you very subtly yes. or something like this. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So I arranged, I arranged those uh, f- uh, several times with Latifa. And uh, I had it covered. I have a team to cover the meeting to make sure that, number one, it was not a, tr- a trap for me. Uh, and number two, to ensure of uh, safety. So that's how I got her passport. When I got her passport, the passport came, she gave me with a, a birth certificate. So right away, when I saw passport and birth certificate, I knew it was a real one because a fake passport, they know birth certificate, you know, they print it out somewhere in the back of a kitchen and, you know, but... Uh, and then uh, with with my connections, I was able to check the passport, and it came uh, it came back with authentic, real. Uh, and then I kept it, and nobody knew about it. The only place where I had information about the passport was on my email. But then somebody I knew hacked my email account and stole my emails between me and Latifa. And then it is that person who sold that information to Irish Times. So, and that's why I want to write a book because I don't know if tomorrow somebody is going to get information or steal information from me. And uh, it, because it's partial, you know, because when I was communicating with Latifa and for security reasons, you're, you're going to give a piece of information through this channel, and then you're going to continue to this channel, and then to this channel. So if one channel is uh, corrupted or compromised, you don't get the whole picture sure, because sure. it's divided. So that's what happened here. Uh, that individual uh, who is a convicted criminal, by the way, I mean, stole. you don't have to name them, but in the book, do you name the person or do you do you keep no, this person's in the identity? Name, I, don't name, I, don't, I don't name the person, but with the description, he will recognize himself. Uh, I don't want to name it because uh, I don't want to give him the satisfaction that he's on my mind. You know, it, it has nothing to do with Latifa. He's not connected. He did not contribute with anything with the escape of Latifa. You know, like Radha Sterling, for instance, or the lawyer in the US. Or, but and did the Irish it, newspaper contact you to say, we've got this information, is it correct? I mean, it seems like that would be the logical, you do have social media, so I know you're maybe not the easiest person to contact, but you do have social media. There, There is ways to try and contact you. Has anyone tried to say, is this correct? Is this information correct? Or have they just put it out there and, and gone with it? Okay, that, that, that's something I don't like because the Irish time they contacted me to do the fact checking, but they didn't know they did not do fact checking. What they were doing is fishing. They wanted to get more information. So of course I I, I, I uh, refuted the information that they wanted to publish, that she bought a passport for two hundred thousand euro. That was not true. 
and that it was not a fake passport either. That was not true. So I, I refuted those facts, but they published it anyway. So what's the point of asking me for fact checking if they don't listen to me and, and they, they publish the wrong information anyway? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, that is crazy. I mean, it sounds, I mean, I work in the media. I, if someone tells you it's not true, I think you have to say, well, this person obviously knows um, what, what they're doing. Um, and it wasn't like you were selling information or coming to them and, and you know, they, they contacted you. You had no, what's it called, agenda. You had no axe to grind, I'm assuming, because this is the first time you're hearing about the passport in public, right? Because you never put it out there. Yeah. I, you never mentioned it. And then the, 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 the report, uh, he, he played semantic. Because the article said, the title or the article said that Latifa bought a Yaish passport for 300,000 euro. And I said, that is not true. And then uh, uh, he probably talked to his source, that, that criminal guy. And then he called me back and he said, uh, what do you mean she did not buy a, a passport for 200,000? Do you mean she bought it for less? So you see, that, that's why I call it not fact checking, but phishing. He wanted to know more information. So yes, yeah, she bought a passport. It was not fake. It was real, and it was not for two hundred thousand euro. But at the same time, they were implying that somehow Latifa got screwed if she had paid uh, two hundred thousand dollars for a passport, which is actually a normal price if you want. And I mean, I'm not going to explain how to do it, but look, even myself, like, like you see me today, I have two passports, two different passports, different names. They are real, it's not fake. You can buy a citizenship today. You can buy a, a passport, a citizenship in certain countries. I'm not going to name them, but you can buy passport and it's, it's for $300,000. So it's not, even if she had bought a passport for $200,000 a year, uh, she would not have been scammed because her passport was real and authentic. But it seems an odd, um, to me, it seems an odd uh, thing to take of this whole story and uh, incident, whether she paid too much or uh, she was screwed to the price. It seems an odd thing for me, for the journalists to, to pursue. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a bit odd, but to me, it's the it's the least important how much this passport cost uh, of all the things that happened and the ramifications yeah. and you know what I mean. It seems an odd thing to pursue. I I, I totally agree with you, and, and, and it certainly does not help Latifa to to expose that. So now, it's, uh, because of that, now I'm explaining how fake passports are made. Uh, Precisely uh, the, the, the process, you know, the different, because when people say fake passport, they don't even know what fake means, because when they say fake passport, it actually includes different type of passport. Uh, the, 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 one, uh, the one that uh, I used before or the one that Latifa used, uh, it's called an assumed name passport. Assumed name. That means it's not your name, but it's still you. So, but it's not fake. Uh, so you have assumed name passport, you have fake passport, forged passport, you have different type of passport. The, 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 the worst one are the ones that are printed in the back of a, a kitchen with a, a ink jet printer. <laughs> Those passports will get to prison right away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And in terms of the book, uh, you know, what are you hoping for people to take from the book? Obviously, it is, you know, you say you, you write about Latifa's story and your story in parallel before you were before you were in contact. And then obviously the details and I think we've touched upon. But what are you hoping people take from the book? What lessons and um, sort of uh, feelings would you like them to take uh, from your writing and what you're saying in the book? I'm sorry, come again. In terms of the book. Um, obviously, it's 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 Latifa's story, your story before you knew each other, and then coming together, and you know, obviously, you know, the successful escape and the ramifications and all, and all the things that have happened since then. But what would you like readers to sort of maybe take from the book, learn from the book, lessons in general? You know, what are you hoping that people get from this book? Because you're not just doing it for for gossip or to make yourself famous. That's not your obviously your goal. If it was, you would have done something uh, very different and a lot sooner than now. So, what are you hoping that readers take from it? 
uh, that uh, people learn from from it. Uh, I, I give a, a few lessons, and and you are the journalist. You know what I'm going to say. You understand? Is that one teaching that I got from uh, being an intelligence officer is that an information is worth as much as its source. So when you get an information, even if it's a great information, it's probably worth nothing if the source is not reliable. So in, in life in general, when you learn something, just consider where you got that information from. Because if that, that source is uh, not reliable, you cannot rely on that information. Uh, and uh, the, book, the book is also directed to the people who live or work in the Middle East and that they should not trust anybody there. And uh, when I say don't trust anybody, it's not just the locals, you know, the, the, the Emiratis or the uh, Arabic people in general. It, it's also the, the expatriates, the, form, the foreigners who live there. And I don't mean to offend them or blame, blame them or, or on anything, uh, but when I was helping Latifa, my rule number one, rule number one, which I broke, rule number one, you don't trust an expatriate. You never ask for help to an expatriate in the UAE or in those countries. Why? Because it's not a matter, just a matter of trust. For instance, uh, there was one woman who helped Latifa uh, sending money overseas to buy stuff, uh, you know, uh, because Latifa did not have a bank account. So if, if, if I needed to buy uh, scuba equipment, uh, she cannot, she cannot, you know, she doesn't have a credit card or anything. So I need someone else to process the payment or send the money somewhere so I can buy this equipment, a satellite receiver, you know, whatever. Are we talking so, quite large sums of money or, you know, I guess the stuff's quite expensive, this type of uh, equipment. Yeah, they're expensive stuff, but the, 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 the point here is not if it's expensive or not. The, so she asked a friend, a woman, a, a British woman, I name her in the book, uh, to send money. But the woman, she did not know about the escape or nothing, you know, because Latifa told her, uh, I, I told her what to say. You know, I told Latifa, don't tell her anything about the escape. Just tell her you invest money in some countries and you you, you do you do you want to keep it quiet, so you don't want to anybody to know about it. So I'm just sending money to people there so they can buy me some properties. So what happened is that when Latifa was captured, they arrested maybe 15, 20 people that Latifa knew just because they knew her, they were arrested. It doesn't matter if you know anything or not. If you knew, those people knew Latifa and they were arrested. And one of them was that woman. And because she sent money to, to suppliers through Western Union, the police were able to find the record and then she was accused of money laundry, which is money laundry. And they, they told her, okay, so now you're going to do what we want you to do, or you go to prison for eight years for money laundry. You think she had the choice? She had no choice. She lived in Dubai. She had a house there. She has a husband. She has two kids. And uh, they... It's an impossible situation. Yeah, you're, it's an impossible so situation. That's why... That's yeah. why one of the teaching of that is that if you need to do something special, uh, illegal uh, in Dubai, you don't ask for help to a local, uh, to, to an expatriate, because either they can sell you out, they can report you, or if they get caught, they go sell you out anyway because they have no choice. So there yeah. is no point. There is no point having somebody local to help you. 
Again, I, I think I should mention anyone who's not lived in the Middle East and countries like the UAE, um, you have a visa to live there and everything revolves around this visa. Uh, you, you, your family are all connected to it, your children. You, you don't, I mean, if you want to leave the country, they can block your passport in an instant. It's not like maybe living in America, or Britain or, or France, where you can maybe drive over a border or you can, your kids are not involved or your family, like everyone's involved and it's, it's a, your bank account's frozen. You don't have the same. If you get into legal problems, it's, it goes from zero to 100 in the blink of an eye. Um, so I think that's what you're saying there. That these people don't have, they're, they're compromised straight away. Is There's not a decision for them to make because maybe their, their kids' freedoms are at stake, at stake. So, of course, they're going to do whatever the authorities want. Exactly. Absolutely right. So that's why it's better to not ask anybody local, expat or foreigners or local, any service because it will affect them negatively if something happens. And so, one thing I want to ask you was, and I, again, I don't want to take away from the book. I, I know people want to read it. And, but the, the thing with this bringing this phone on, that seems to have been the, a real key big deal here, this, this phone brought on to your boat. Um, was that phone brought on intentionally, do you think, with bad intentions, or was it just a mistake? Even I, watching, uh, as again, I'm saying I watch all these spy movies, I think we all know, don't bring a phone if you don't, if you, if you don't want to be tracked. Okay, uh, number one, it is impossible to track a boat in the middle of the ocean. I, I did it myself. I, I, did, I did some verifications with the engineers at Yahoo. I knew it, but just to confirm. So when you send an email, because I, I've seen in the media uh, some reporters uh, putting the blame on Latifa because she had sent an email to her family and they were able to locate her from that email. Uh, that is absolutely not true. You, you cannot locate the source of an email in the middle of the ocean. There's no, there's no IP server. Uh, I mean, where? So there's, it is impossible to triangulate or locate a, an email or a radio signal, a mobile phone or anything in the middle of the ocean. Now, I believe, I don't have evidence for that, but it, it is more likely than not that uh, the FBI helped Dubai because they are allies. And you know, they have billions of dollars in, in military contracts, uh, they have diplomatic ties, and uh, I am here in between, you know, I'm consumable, so they don't care. So uh, they were giving a favor to Sheikh Mohammed in, 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 in telling him where the, the, the location of the boat. Uh, I, I don't think it was a, a mistake or, uh, they were misled. It was intentional. But bringing that phone on, the per I, I don't know if you name the person in the book. Uh, I, I think I have an idea who it is, but I, I don't know if you name the person in the book who brought the cell phone on that you said that they used, the, they had the Pegasus, so then from Pegasus they could go to your satellite provider and then from there... Yeah, it's Tina. Tina oh, the, the well, do you think she brought... Why did she bring the phone? Did she know she had the phone? Or, I mean, it, it just seems, uh, why bring a phone when you're told not to? It, it, I don't see the point of going through all this uh, special planning. And then the one thing you're told not to do, you do. Was she a, is she a bad agent in this? Because it seems a very strange thing to do. But still today, uh, I cannot understand why she did it. Uh, I don't understand if it was intentional or if she had another agenda or if it was a mistake. What I do know is that I, I must have told her like 20 times over six months not to do it. When I escaped, it's the same. I left my phone behind. And I asked Latifa to leave her phone behind. There are many reasons to do that. It's it, it not just because of Pegasus. And I, I told the same to Tina. And uh, they, they're not a thing that I don't understand. Because initially, she even said that she did not have her phone on the boat. So I, I asked the, the reporters who were asking me that, I said, uh, have you seen that picture, that selfie that they took in the car? Was I've seen it, yes. Post, I know, the, I know, the, I know the picture you're seeing, yeah. So I asked the reporter, how did they take that picture? Oh, with her phone. Ah, so she had her phone. Because... 
And it, it, it's another thing. I mean, come on, when you do a mistake, uh, when you do an escape, which in Dubai, it's an illegal act that it's criminal. When you cross a border illegally, it's a crime. So why would you take a selfie? I mean, uh, 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 criminals, when, when people cross borders or to smuggle something or what, they don't take selfies. Nobody takes selfies. Why would she take a selfie crossing illegally a border? So, Do you think maybe they thought the job was done? That at that point, it was it was easy to get to the boat, and that was easy. Obviously, you knew the boat was not going to be the easy part. But do you think maybe they thought, oh well, we, we we're out of the we're out of the UE now. We're across the border. It's no problem. No, she knew the job was not done because it was just a step. There were the other steps on the way. You know, going to the beach, the dinghy. The, the dinghy ride on, on the waters. Oh, I mean, do you think know. subconsciously in the back of their mind, they thought, okay, that's the hard part. You know, I've done the hard part. This is now the easier. I'm not saying it's correct, but you know that maybe we, you, you feel like you've done uh, the hard uh, part of something, you know? It, it could be. But, uh, it, and to give you an example, Latifa was not like that. Because when, let, for instance, it's a, it's a typical example of what's in on, on your mind when you, Conduct uh, when you are running some that type of illegal operation. So in Oman, they met uh, the French guy, the, the Chris guy, and uh, so they went to his house to, to proceed to the next step, you know, go to the beach with the dinghy. And uh, so they were in his apartment and he said, oh, do you want to have lunch now? You want to eat something? And Latifa said, no, we don't eat anything. We go now, we have to go. So Latifa, had that very much in her mind, you know, to proceed, follow step by step and follow the instruction. When uh, Tina was not like that. So maybe in her mind, it was, oh, the job is done, it's okay, we can relax. But you, you cannot relax in the situation like that. You are still in Oman, it's a neighboring country, you still have other steps to take. Oh, so yeah. I mean, job, I don't think done. I'd be having lunch. I've, I mean, I, I've never been in this situation, but I don't think I would be having lunch. I think I would be, uh, I don't think I'd want to eat. I think I would want to get to the boat and get to safety. So, uh, it's something else that I don't understand. And uh, trust me, I have a long experience of crossing borders when I, when I should not. <laughs> <laughs> with, with people or things or, uh, that, that, that I did. And Every time you do something like that, so you, you have techniques to control yourself, uh, you know, to look normal. But there's one thing I never saw during my entire life experience is to see a woman like her being so relaxed, smiling, taking selfies. Be, be, because I'm telling you, I've been through these things before. Well, and you're a secret you... service agent. You have the training. This is someone who doesn't have this training. I mean, I, I can only, I think, I, as I said just earlier, I can only imagine, I think my heart would have been, bah, 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 bah. You know, I would yeah, not exactly. be there. Yeah. Um, you know, you're trained to do this. So is that why you, you have some doubt about her intentions? Or, or do you think she just maybe yeah. didn't understand? Do you think maybe she didn't understand well, the danger? Either she did not understand or... She had another agenda, but but to me there, there there is no valid explanation. You don't cross a border illegally with a smile. Doesn't happen, never. If you if you cross a border with a smile, either there is some other obscure reason or sinister reason, or you are an idiot and you don't yeah, know what you're doing. I, I think even going to the airport, I think we all probably know when you go to the airport on holiday, you go to a country and. The border person looks at your passport, looks at you, looks at the passport. You're, there's always that moment of, uh, okay, I hope this is okay. There's not, it's not a joke. And if you're doing it illegally, I only imagine you're more feeling like that. That, exactly. okay, uh, and, and, uh, you know, and exactly. And I explained that to her many times because to to do like if I escape, we have two two plans, two options. One was under the water. And the other one was in the car, you know, crossing the border illegally. And, and I explained to Tina, like several times, you know, I wanted her to be aware of that. I said, if you cross the border under the water, it is safe. And it was Latifa's idea, actually. And I like this idea because if you go like a Navy SEAL type, you know, an insertion under the water, 
it's very safe, it's, it's undetectable. And uh, even if somebody saw you, you know, you just could be diving, you, you just got lost or something. But I, I told Tina, if you get caught at the border with the daughter of the ruler hidden in the trunk of the car, that's a bullet in the head, right there in the desert. They will yeah, you know, there's no, there's no coming back from that. That's a serious there's one. No yeah. coming back for that. So I, I insisted on the risk. I wanted her to be aware of the risk she was taking. And then when I see that picture, she's smiling, crossing the border illegally. To me, there's something wrong there. Have you spoke to Tina much? Have you reached out to her? I, I assume yeah, you've tried uh, to, yeah. We did the debriefing and uh, we talked about it, but she never gave me an explanation, nothing. Uh, it's just silent, nothing. And now you've got the book out. You know, where do you go from here? Um, I'm assuming you don't want to be looking over your shoulder all life, but is that something currently you do? You get in a car, you see who's driving behind you. I mean, I'm assuming Dubai, um, again, if anyone's not aware, it's a very country with uh, or a state. Sorry, it's not a country. The UAE is a state a country, but Dubai is a, a state of the uh, country. Yeah, um, yeah, it, they, ha they have a very proud, um, very high opinion. Sheikh Mohammed does not, is not a, someone who would like to be made to look bad or... They have a very um, big ego. They want to be regarded in the world. Um, they will not forget this. Uh, I don't know if, what they will do, but I'm assuming for you, um, where do you go from here? Do you think you'll always be living in fear of something happening? Are you always checking in your mirror? And I guess bringing the book up, maybe bringing this book out, maybe increases that again for you. Uh, yeah, probably it, it, it will increase it, but I'm not sure about it because if anything happened to me, then it would it would put the light on the book. So. It's a double-edged thing, uh, but regardless, I, I'm, it's not that I'm living in fear of looking over my shoulder all the time, but by design, uh, I'm, I'm trained to look for obvious or weird uh, details. Or So I, I, I would notice if there was something uh, I would notice. It happened to me before. Uh, I detected surveillance. Uh, so... I, I know how to detect it. So I, I, I'm aware and uh, I, I'm, I'm cautious, not in fear, but I'm cautious. And what about the people around you? Uh, you know, your family, I mean, obviously we don't want to get into details of what they do and where they are. That's, you know, that, 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 that's not, the, that, that's not uh, the place for this. But um, what about people you, you can't protect? You can't be around your family all the time. And does, does that kind of worry you? Because um, you, 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 you must think about these things, friends, people you're close to that they could use as leverage or, or a way to kind of draw you into something? <clears throat> yes, but uh, in, in time, I was able to make them aware of uh, those dirty tricks. And so they've been trained. Good, good, good. Uh -huh. they, 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 know, they know the drill. Yeah, no, I'm glad to hear that because that's something I, I thought would have been a thing. And my final thing is that you you brought a great point up about sources. And I, I think for everyone in the me in the media myself included, that is something you always want to be sure of. If someone comes to you with good information, and I don't know how this Irish Times passport story, but someone comes to you with really good information just out of the blue, so you have to always think, where'd that come from? Or, or, or why are they telling me? Or, you know, um, because information is a, a currency. It's, no one gives away the best stuff just because just because they like you. There's always something, uh, there's a point to it. With this book, are you worried that the UE government, other factors, they put stories out, they brief against you, they, they see the book's rubbish, people talk about it. I'm assuming that's something you're prepared for. Uh, maybe someone goes on Amazon and gives it bad reviews. Um, all these type of tricks to discredit the book, I, I'm sure, are going to play. Does that worry you? I'm not worried. I, I, I'm aware of that. I know I'm going to be attacked and, and, and criticized and get bad reviews. So I'm aware of that. And in preparation... Uh, every word I say in my book is backed up by something, a statement, a court document or something. So uh, I, I cannot be caught in a lie because it's backed up. And then at the same time, I have an objective approach. I'm not bitter or, you know, accusing like, you know, nonsense thing. I just present the facts and the options. And then the reader itself, himself, the reader will be able to make a decision because I present the fact or, uh, or ask questions. 
so that the reader can think, oh, yeah, he's right. Yeah, why, why is that? Why is that? So even if there's something that I don't know, because I don't have the evidence. So if I don't have the evidence, I cannot state a fact as, as, as if it was true. I say, I believe this or I believe that. <clears throat> and then I let the reader decide with the arguments I bring in. And I, I have many instances in the book where I have uh, what, what I call the uh, uh, inconsistencies, things that are inconsistent. <clears throat> So they are inconsistent, but I don't have evidence. But it doesn't matter. I can still present an inconsistent inconsistencies and say it looks that way, it looks that way. But what is in between? Because this it doesn't make sense. Why would that person do that when it could do that? And then the reader himself can decide. And I cannot be criticized for that because I bring both of the arguments. Yeah, and I think the key thing on your side is that. Um, you were helping Latifa. you being caught was only going to maybe end your life or put you in prison for life or give you serious problems. There was no, uh, there's certainly no benefit to you that the thing, the, the plan um, did not finish. Um, there were obviously, there's no way you would have done that because you're only endangering yourself and maybe ending your own life. Clearly you were invested in Latifa, So the trust there is, is clear. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, I, I, mean, it's, I lost my vote. Yeah. Yes, yes, true. Um, my, my final thing just to mention is I, I think now we're going to see more pictures of Latifa. Um, I think the recent one was she was in Austria. But uh, I think if you look online, there's a, I think there's been some photoshopping to put her in Austria. That's not really her. Do we expect to see social media now where pop up where she's because a few years ago, remember, we had that spate of things where she was going around the world traveling. Uh, she was with a, with a lady and she was appearing in all these sort of countries to show that she had her freedom. But I think a lot of people assume that these were these pictures were just she was taken somewhere, made to take a picture, but she really wasn't free. We've not heard from her online, as far as I'm aware. I don't think she speaks anymore. Um, I, I don't know if you have more information on how, what's going on with her in Dubai. Um, I think it's a bit of a mystery to all of us, un unless you know more. Well, I know more about uh, no, I know more about it, and I, I'm I'm getting there. The the picture in Austria is fake. Uh, I published a video on on my social media to explain how it is fake. Basically, it's a face insert into somebody else's body. So they took a picture of a woman and then they inserted Latifa's picture in that woman. It's not Latifa, Latifa, that picture is not Latifa. What is disturbing, and I know why now, because I have a source within in the, in, an insider source. I have a source in the palace. And I got information uh, uh, last week that confirms what I say. Because why would Dubai resort to post uh, a poor job Photoshop at that? You know, it, 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 it's not a good job. Yeah. You know, why not just say, fly there, were... fly to Austria, do the picture for real, fly back? That would be that would be easier than doing a ba bad Photoshop. Yeah. yeah. So the reason why they could not do that, and uh, that was confirmed to me last week, is because Latifa is under psychiatric drugs. Uh, benzodiazepine, tricyclic, antidepressants. Uh, and what do these do? Do these make you almost uh, like you're unconscious or you're, you're, you're almost uh, very, very, very subdued? Is that, is that what these do, these drugs do? It, it makes you subdued and you cannot interact with people. You cannot have a conversation and you cannot interact with people. So if you cannot interact with people, you cannot travel. You know, the first one going to see you is the, the immigration officer. Maybe he's going to say there's something wrong with that woman. <clears throat> and then you have security behind her. Say, no, she's okay. You know, don't worry about it. It doesn't. It, it's a risk. Uh, so right now, uh, Latifa is in prison. I don't know what kind of prison, but she's detained and she's under drugs. She has nurses 24 7 24-7. So her health is deteriorating. And I know that from an insider in Palace last week. I cannot his name. I cannot of course, name oh, no, no, of course, of course, of course. No, no, no. <clears throat> so, but, I mean, she uh, could almost pass away and we would never know about it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I, I, I'm, that's the last thing I want to happen to, uh, to the poor, poor woman. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, she I, could I, die and we never know about it. Or we, we don't know what's going to happen, I guess. 
and, and it's something that I noticed again when uh, when I was interrogated in the prison because they they wanted to force they they, they wanted to force me to make a video to discredit Latifa. Uh, so at the same time, they were explaining to me. And the, the problem with that is that they actually believe it. They, they, don't, they don't say that to manipulate or trying to convince you, but they actually believe that when a woman wants to be free, she has a mental illness. They actually believe that. So Latifa wants to be free. She wants to be a free woman, like every woman in the West. And they, they consider her as having a mental illness. So because they, have a man, because they think she has a mental illness, they, they give her psychiatric uh, treatment. Because honestly, they think that she's sick, but she's not sick. She was a healthy woman. Well, you see in her videos when she speaks on the, you know, the YouTube video that was released after the, the capture, she seems very um, stable. Um, coherent yeah, yeah. Uh, from I don't know her but the video uh, we've all seen it it's online people can still see it I mean she seemed very coherent logical relaxed yeah, explaining absolutely. why she wanted to be free absolutely and my final thing my very very final thing to ask you um, do you think um, there's a possibility not for you uh, maybe uh, but someone else may Latifa may have another a, a chance to get her freedom that she may one day be able to escape Dubai again, uh, and this time not be captured, or do you think that that'll never happen? Unfortunately, I think that will never happen. They will never, they will never let her go. To me, that's an impossibility. Unless someone goes there with uh, some elaborated escape plan, but they will never let her go because. <clears throat> Look, look what happened. Uh, she, she had uh, somebody smuggled the phone and she was able to film some uh, secret videos in the bathroom. <clears throat> look what she said in a few videos already, attacking her father, attacking Mary Robinson, that calling her a liar, that she, she, it was not true, she was not happy in her family, she was in prison. So she said that in a few videos. Imagine if she was free on TV in, in, in New York, uh, 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 going to be devastating. And it's even worse now because with what they put her through, you know, all those pictures that we saw in uh, Spain, uh, in Dubai, in Iceland, all those pictures were staged. Yeah, because it's always her and that woman, isn't it? The I think she's a British woman. I I don't know her name. I, I don't know if we can mention her name. But yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I mentioned her in yeah. my book. That 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 the woman they forced to cooperate. Otherwise, they would put her in prison for eight years for money laundering. Yeah, because it seemed an odd. They're always together in these pictures, and it's it's kind of like un, it's an unnatural holiday picture. It doesn't look real. It looks a bit like someone has said, "Take a picture," <laughs> uh, yeah. and I guess that's what you're saying has happened. So that so Latifa is not free, even when it's it, it it doesn't even look like she was free during those uh, travels anyway. But they're trying to convince the public that Latifa is free, and and she's not. And now it's even worse because uh, I know Latifa and she's a fighter, and and, and I'm surprised. Uh, I know her for a long time, and uh, even when she got caught the first time at the at the border when she was sixteen, one thing that I noticed with Latifa is not once she gave the name of a, of a person who helped her. Not once, so she doesn't talk. <clears throat> I, I'm sure she's forced, threatened, and probably beat up, and but she doesn't talk. So. <clears throat> If she's free, you give her a phone, well, she's gonna talk <laughs> like hell. <laughs> yeah, of course, but, yeah. yeah. But, but if she's accompanied with people, uh, you know, like we see in Spain, uh, we don't see behind the camera. We don't, we don't see how many people were behind the camera, you know, to make sure that she behaves and she, she doesn't get out of control or we don't, we don't know, we, we don't see that. <clears throat> 
yeah no it's uh it's a real sad story in some ways i mean well not not in some ways in a lot of ways that this is uh someone just wanted to live their life and you see all these ramifications and things that have happened and things that's exposed and you think everyone should just well, be able to live the life they want no, to live well to me there's no chance unfortunately I mean, you know, it's very sad but I, I don't i don't think they will ever let her go and 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 you cannot trust the United Nations either. And, and it's something I don't understand with the reporter because, I mean, you've seen it. Marie Robinson, she was the former High Commissioner of Human Rights in the United Nations, and she lied and she got caught. You remember when she said Latifa was happy with her family? And yeah, there's some pictures of them. Uh, if anyone's not seen them, I think Marie yeah. Robinson's sitting there and, uh, uh, and there's a uh, they're having lunch, I think, or something to eat at a, yeah. at a table. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, two years later, Latifa is seen on the video saying she's a liar. That's not true. It was a setup. Uh, I was in prison. I was not happy with my family. Okay, so that's one point. And then we see those uh, pictures in November 2021, where Latifa is with the current uh, high commissioner human rights at the United Nations and Michel Bachelet. And Michel Bachelet said the exact same thing. The, the, she said the same thing, that Latifa is in the loving care of her family. But when we know what happened before, why should we believe that woman? Because yeah. she's saying the same thing that Marie Robinson said before. So why should we believe her? What, uh the, because she's a human rights commissioner, but Marie Robinson was also a human rights commissioner. And also the access to get to Latifa would only be through her family, through the authorities. It's not uh, It's not like exactly. uh, you, you have the, you can just go to her apartment and, uh, you know, chop the door and come in. It's all very managed and, okay, meet, meet me in New York. Maybe what about that? Meet in New York. We'll both meet there yeah. and uh, let's see then. But it's always in Dubai. It, it, there's no, um, like you say, it's never 50-50. It's always, uh, you know, so Dubai is always controlling hear, the situation. Even if you hear an official at the United Nations say that Latifa is happy with her family, you cannot believe it. You, you cannot trust them. Yeah. So you can, but, unfortunately, we cannot rely on, the, on, on these people, on this organization. They won't, they, they, they won't do anything. They won't help. So Latifa is, is trapped in a horrible uh, hellish situation with the uh, medicated, uh, forcibly medicated. That is horrible. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, Herbert Joubert, thank you so much uh, for your time. Um, the book, A Private Family Matter, um, people can go on Amazon, they can look online, they can look at your social media. I think it's going to be a controversial book, so I'm sure some places maybe. Uh, we'll try not to sell it or it will be blocked some places. And if you're watching this in the UAE or or the, you live in the UAE, uh, I don't think you'll find it in the, <laughs> available there. Uh, but hopefully you can find it and read it. And um, like I say, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. Uh, share your story. I think people appreciate it. Uh, will, will you be doing a lot more media stuff or do you want the book to speak for itself? Or are you keen to do more media? No, no, I'm keen to do more media because, you know, there will be more questions and um more requests for comments. So I'm, I'm keen to do more media and I'm, I'm thanking you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Oh, great. Well, I, I hope more people reach out to you because um, I think it's uh, having this information from someone speaking so honestly. And I, I can just say on the record, uh, you know, we, we did not agree what we were going to speak about today. And there was no like, oh, you can't ask this. You can't, you can't, you can't say this. You have to say that. There was no, there was no, Herb was very open. He let me speak about anything. The only thing we're not talking about is where you're located, but Again, what does that matter? That's nothing to do with the, the, the story about this, where, where you're located. So it doesn't matter. But thank you again. Um, I appreciate your honesty. And, and thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, Chris. Have a good night. Have a good day.